Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is your host, Debbie Dashinger, and this show is sponsored by Dr. Dean here and Access Consciousness. They do beautiful healing energy work out in the world. You can become a facilitator, go to their classes, look up their products, drdaneher.com as well as accessconsciousness.com. It is worth it. Dare to Dream podcast has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and a Webby Award. It's always ranked in the top 50 best podcasts in all of USA and self-improvement, as well as in many other countries. It's really fun to see where we pop. And I thank you all for tuning in and keeping us there. Debbie Dashinger is a certified coach. Her expertise is visibility and media, and she coaches people to write a page Turner book. If there's a book inside of you, whether you've written before or you want to finally give birth to that book inside of you, we have an opportunity for you right now. Go to debbiedashinger.com slash visible visionary. If you have a vision for your book, I help you write your book, know exactly how to turn it into a page turner, and not only go from inception to completion, but also I take the class how to self-publish your book and all the pieces you need to make your book really readable and wantable, desirable out into the world. We have ongoing live coaching with me. So go to debbiedashinger.com slash visible visionaries. And if you've already written your book and you'd like to take your book to a guaranteed international bestseller, just send us an email. We've got a special right now, support at debbiedashinger.com. And DebbieDashinger.com also has places and spaces for you to get free tips and tools how to be more visible out into the world. My guest is returning, really excited because it's not often I get to have a conversation like this with somebody who fully embodies without apology, who she is and what she sees. This is the hero ingredient of the future for wellness. It is Scarlet Raven, founder of White Fox Medicinals. Scarlett is an illuminator into the unknown. She creates award-winning medicinal products from herbs, CBD, cannabis, and psilocybin. She listens to the spirit of the plants to formulate and transmute healing on this planet. She's an international best-selling author and Scarlett enjoys public speaking and she allows higher wisdom to come through for all of us as well as one-on-one -on -one sessions, and she holds space for others to come back to a state of wholeness, happiness, and internal sprouting joy. Her newest book, Psilocybin Transmissions, is a channel book from the spirit of psilocybin, and it explains why psilocybin is here for all of us now. And with that, I welcome the beautiful Scarlet Raven back to Dare to Dream. It is so great to have you. <laughs> so nice to see you again, Debbie. Yeah, it is totally my pleasure. I cannot wait to get caught up. I know, let's see. So it's not even been a full three months. It's been more like two months since you've been here. And I know, because I already know your energy, two months <laughs> is probably like two years. At least. <laughs> right? With what's been going on. So let's start first. How is your piece of land coming along? Um, I am on a pause, so I'm waiting for my house in California to close. And as soon as that happens, I'll take my next step more seriously. But what I tuned into was I really want to have a pause. So I got a really cozy Airbnb. Mm -hmm. I have my horse here. I have my chickens here and I have all my cats here and I'm doing a, a winter hibernation, chill out reset vibe. And so like initially I moved out here and I had my fire saying, go get your next place. What's your next place? And then I realized I need a, I need a, I need a chill moment. That's awesome. So I'm taking my chill moment and I'll see what source brings me. Mm. So that's nice. So you're like a baby bear out there hibernating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what is calling to you? outside of that. And while you're taking this internal respite, what's calling you to dive into right now regarding where we came from unity mm -hmm. and where we are now, which is really divided. <laughs> um, I am filled with so much inspiration and so much insight every day. 
inside of this capsule of what we're going through, which is kind of like a shit show crumbling planet. And I'm feeling more clarity than I've ever felt. I'm seeing more things than I've ever seen. And my confidence level to share what I'm seeing is fully intact. So I'm putting myself out there. I'm putting my insight on, you know, the, I don't even want to say the word, but the, the fake cold pandemic that people are afraid of and um, all the different situations with the political agendas and people are starting to see the unaccountability and the lies and a lot is being revealed. Um, that's the 3D level of what people are watching, but there's a whole psychic spiritual level that's also fully intact and being shown to me. And I am just so excited to always be sharing that insight with people. And I feel like that's building a bridge into 5D living. That's what I feel like I'm doing right now. Um, a lot of people don't like what I'm saying and I'm getting a lot of pushback, but I'm also getting a lot of thank yous. Thank you for speaking the truth that I'm afraid to speak. Thank you for being a trailblazer into a new world that's not us being muzzled. So like, I, I feel both sides and the people that are pushing back and kind of canceling me from their life. I love them deeply. I feel the pain that they're in. I feel the confusion that they're in and I don't take it personally. So it's not are these followers of yours or are these uh, yeah. family and friend people who are pushing um, back? Half and half. Um, half of my family is awake to what I see and they're starseeds. And the other half of my family thinks I'm a total wackadoodle. And then uh, a lot of my friends that were, I was in community with in California, California got the hardest pump of brainwashing. So there's so many people in California that are still caught under the matrix. And I really threaten their idea of what the world is. So they, you know, I'm the messenger, but they think that I'm the one threatening their reality. Interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. And so I could say so much about that. I, I will just say this on my end, that a lot of the information I've received has just happened organically. I didn't go searching for it. I don't even know if I was terribly in question about it, but you know, God is good. God is <laughs> and so uh, I would have people in the medical field, multiple, none of whom knew each other, confess things to me. You know, we don't have filled up beds. Yeah. And we do receive $39,000 every time we write COVID related death. Yeah. And so they were employing that and seeing it employed to ridiculous, like unethical yeah. dense, just so that a hospital would receive money. But all these poor people who came in for cancer or brain aneurysm or whatever else, they were old age. Um, they were being put on ventilators, being written off as COVID. Their family wasn't able to see them. Their bodies were taken someplace just to get money. I could go on myself. And yeah. there's a lot of other professionals who have confessed things to me. So yes, a lot of question. And, you know, I mean, at the very least, if you know anything about oil and what we've done in the name of war and right. land yeah. uh, and greed. So yeah. none of this is that shocking. Um, right. So from your point of view then, Scarlett, do you even think it's possible, conceivable, probable that we might be able to move into unity as a collective anytime soon or at all? <laughs> yes, I 100% do. The word unity has a little bit of flexibility because to me, there are going to be some people that will refuse the truth and that's okay. That's their soul journey and they get to have that right of passage. Um, I do think there'll be a fair amount of people that will just consistently refuse the truth. And from the visioning that I'm getting and a lot, like, I'm sure you can feel it. There's two realities going on right now. There's two totally different realities. There's the reality of people that see through that this is an agenda that people are removing human rights and calling it a pandemic. It's just totally fake. It's the same, um, it's the same platform or procedure that they use during the Holocaust. Now we're not at the point where we're being shoved into gas chambers yet, but they are calling to remove our guns, which is what they did to the Jews first. So the Jews couldn't fight back. They could go on a bus. So if you look at the vibrational picture of what happened during the Holocaust, we're at the beginning stages of that. And it's the same people that designed that thing that are designing the COVID thing. And it's, it's people will say, oh, this is a conspiracy theory. 
and they brush it off. And if you just follow the money, if you do your own research and you just follow the money, you will find out where it's starting and you will also find out what that person's agenda is. And it'll be very easy to see what else they've maneuvered and put upon our society. So what I think is that um, the amount of people that are awakened to the truth is growing so quickly every day. And I can see that. And I think that people that are able to see through the bullshit and stand up for freedom, which means take your mask off, open your business and deal with the consequences. The level of complacency of, I'm just too scared. I don't wanna make any waves. You're bigger than that. You're, you're braver than that. Your soul has more to say than that. And I think that that's the precipice that we're on is, um, you know, this whole cancel culture came into being. And it's like, <laughs> they, they, they don't want to offend anyone. And I just have to say from a spiritual perspective, if you're offended and you have emotions released in your body, that's power. If you start saying that we can't call people certain names or whatever, whoever is triggered, it's on you to go through your own emotional growth. If someone says something that upsets you, it's not up to you to cancel that person and what they're saying. To me, it's up to you to expand beyond the feelings that you're feeling and see it from a different perspective and allow the power to come from within. You don't control your outside circumstances to become more powerful within. So the whole you know, cancel culture vibe. And I don't want to say Democrat or Republican because it's not that it's, it's dark and light has nothing to do with Democrat or Republican. Those are labels that use people that the agenda is using to divide us. So it's about dark and light. And if you're feeling like you have to control your external circumstances to feel more powerful, which is what cancel culture is, you're fucked. You're not going to ascend. So to me, this is about ascension. This is about becoming enlightened and following those spiritual lines to empower ourselves through this great awakening. That's my prayer with everything I do right now. You know, where I live in this particular town, I found out through one of the business owners, I didn't even realize he was working on some leather for me. And he said, oh, you know, I also own restaurants and we're actually suing the government and the state Yes. for forcing us to close our restaurants. I mean, I don't even know how these people are going to make it. I really don't. And it hurts my heart. So they're suing because it was said, we have to close these because clearly once we reopen them, this is why the spread of COVID happened so quickly within California, all about the restaurants. And all the restaurant owners have fought back and said, really, show us the science. Yeah. And apparently when it went in front of the judge, it was so powerful. The judge said, all right, show us the science. <laughs> so, you know, I'm sitting here saying, you know, the restaurants are going to open by the time they figure this out because the court system's so damn slow. But at the same time, I'm very proud of them for yes. sticking up for themselves and for us and saying, no bueno, this is not okay, not on our watch. And all these amazing businesses, what is going to happen to them? Because I know I take walks every day with my dogs and I'm seeing clothes, clothes, clothes. I'm seeing signs go up. Just places have not been able to make it. That's yeah. a crime. It's a crime. crime to small business. It, this has been a crime against humanity disguised as a global pandemic. It was not a pandemic. It's a cold take vitamin D, get over it. Like the fear to me, when you look at healing from a vibrational perspective, viruses and bacteria are here to produce higher evolutionary experiences. To fear an evolutionary experience, what the fuck? Mm. Like, I just don't even get it. I'm like, wait, when did illnesses become something we fear? This is something we charge through and empower our body to overcome. This isn't something we mask up and hide inside our house. I was just like the whole mentality around it goes against the power of our own being. And how can all of these spiritual people think that they're, they're like, oh no, I wear a mask because that means I'm being kind to others. And I'm like, no, what you're doing is saying that others are too weak to overcome a cold. That's what you're saying. So why, why would you do that? Like when, when somebody is struggling through something, and you help them through, you take away their opportunity to become stronger. So I see this whole mass thing is this codependent mental deficiency of being able to stand in our own power. And I loved how Italy was like, 
we're opening up screw you we can do that too usa can do that too you know and i that's what i i feel like i'm a soldier in a war right now and i'm like come on guys like take your mask off open your business we have to take our own power back it's not just on a physical level when you take your own power back what happens to you spiritually it's insane the amount of illumination you feel in your body it multiplies the amount of psychic insight you get grows the ramifications of being an outlaw right now have great spiritual impacts. Okay, so how do we do that? Um, there may, I'm sure there's people hearing this all over the spectrum. Some are going, WTF, not comfortable, you're crazy, I've lost somebody from to, to COVID, or, you know, or they're in fear about it, and rightfully so, and the media mm -hmm. just creams us like that, and all these crazy statistics, and now it's going to take another year, and right? Yeah. It's very overwhelming. And then there's people who are hearing both sides and sort of uh, not made up. There's some people just living in bliss and they don't want to know. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, then there's some people who are like, hell yeah, with you. So yeah. what about our connection to source universe? Is it possible we can generate a new world? Is it possible from that position, we can create miracles around this? And if so, how and what would they be? What to your vision show you? Yeah, I would like to just start by saying wherever anyone is, is perfect and it's beautiful. And if I'm saying something that's opposite to how you feel, you are still a beautiful, empowered soul. Just because I'm presenting a different picture does not mean you're less than anything. You are greater than everything. So I just want to put that platform out there that I see and hear and love everyone, no matter where they're at. I just want to propose a new thought process to the fear-based one we've all been succumbed to. So number one homework assignment would be to watch the movie Avatar and realize that those beings, they're not violent beings. They don't want to hurt anyone. They want to worship spirit. They want to live in harmony in nature. But if someone comes in like a radicalized idea that's going to rape and pillage their culture and their land, they're gonna fight for it. And that's the fight I'm trying to ignite in, inside of people. What do you believe in? Forget what I'm saying. What do you believe in? Do some self inquiry and discover like, what do I, what am I passionate about? What do I believe in? What do I wanna stand for? Because we're in World War III and half the country doesn't know it. It's a world, it's a war of the mind. So perceptions have been altered via an agenda from programming through media, television, and movies, okay? not to mention your whole schooling process. So if you were one of those beings that took school seriously, they were implanting <laughs> lack of power structures in your perceptual mind, okay? So for us that have studied subconscious programming, we study symbolism, we can see where the bullshit's coming from and we can reject it. But if you, if you haven't done that inquiry, I would just say, why don't you start with what you're passionate about? What do you want to feel? Do you want to feel freedom? Do you want to feel like you're flying through this world? Do you want to feel like you're standing for a bigger movement that's larger than life at this point? We're in spiritual warfare right now. So um, watch the movie Avatar because those beautiful beings are not violent beings. But you better believe that if someone comes to my door and says, we're taking you in because you won't comply and wear a mask, you better believe I'm going to shoot them. I'm going to have a gun. I'm going to shoot him. I, I don't want to hurt a soul. I want my entire life to be devoted to more light and life. But I do have boundaries and I am a badass. So you cannot come in and take my life. I'm not going to just give that to you and roll over. And my voice is my life. I'm not going to cover up my mouth and dumb down my voice to make you feel comfortable. I know that you're strong enough to handle what I say. So I'm going to keep saying it until you realize how strong you actually are. There's, um, there's so many things going on with like the sensitivity of gender, the sensitivity of race, the sensitivity of agenda. We should all be able to speak our peace and not have the offenses of other people shut down our power. That's what I'm trailblazing through right now. Um, and that's what I'm really passionate about. And I wanna awaken that fire inside of people because it's there. 
And yes, they put fluoride in our water and they dumbed a lot of us down, but we can still fight and reactivate our DNA and move into a state of awakening together. So every word I say has the prayer of, you're perfect just where you are. Please do a little inquiry of what you stand for and take a tiny baby step every day towards standing for that. Mm. What are you reading right now? What's your favorite book or <laughs> what, what is your favorite activator? What's happening um, that's really made you think differently or consider different possibilities? <laughs> um, the Sophia Code is my living transmission Bible right now. So Kaya Ra channel goddess Sophia, which is God source, but the feminine aspect. And her book has a series of DNA activations that when you read, it reawakens these parts of your DNA and you gain more power. And it's, it's really juicy and I feel it. I will say that um, the thing that's really rocked my world is watching Hamilton, Ooh. right? Oh my God. Um, and I can't stop thinking about it too. Thank, <laughs> thank you, Disney Plus, right? <laughs> I love that you, that. Oh my God, that you even went, went to Broadway, thank you, before COVID, yes. and able to tape this with Lynn manuela um, Oh my God, what he created to consider that he wrote the book, the lyrics, the music, for me to learn that piece of history, that kind of truth yes. in that yes. way. And it, oh my God, the, talk about no race, no color, yes. using rap, minimal set, I was so moved um, and I laughed out loud a lot. Yeah. I, it rocked my world and I still can't stop thinking about it. I told my, my partner, he's got to watch it and I'm going <laughs> to sneak in and watch it with him because I'm not done. But that's been the most powerful thing I'm, I've seen. And I, I will also say, preface by saying, you know, after all the hype, I thought, oh, by the time I sit down to watch this. And I'm a big Broadway baby. I'm going to be so disappointed. So many people <laughs> have talked about it. And you know what? It was all that and even more. It like, is, girl. I, I saw it live on Broadway <sighs> and in New York. I My mind was blown. I was vibrating for days. I'm totally with you. It's amazing. And you followed everything. You followed everything mm -hmm. they said. The line. See, that's that's so important. It's so important for what's actually happening right now. People think that Biden is president. <laughs> I don't know if you want to go there, but um, that's why I think Hamilton is great because there's a lot of history that's actually being applied right now. Yes. Yep. Yeah. It's an amazing study on so many levels and so much honestly has not changed. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> So that's cool. And, you know, by the way, I've tried to get um, the author of Sophia Code on this show several times. I never hear back from her. So if you have yeah. an in, I'll, I'll see. I'll, I'll get any questions you want answered. I promise. I would love that. I'm buying her jewelry and stuff now. I'm in love with everything. Mm. What is this creature behind you, by the way, that's moving? <laughs> is it a cat? No, maybe they it's were talking about Avatar. There was like this creature <laughs> moving behind you. I have a stuffed whale here. His name is Wu. <laughs> uh, my cat, I have a cat that's doing his thing. Okay, I love it. Yeah, he was activated. So I just want to show people, those who are watching on youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, how gorgeous this pouch is. One of many things I have from Scarlet Raven's company, White Fox Medicinals. Isn't that an amazing drawing? And I just wanna open this up because this is the newest. On the last show, so people wanna know more about your products, just go to the last show with you because there's a lot in there. Ooh, little pieces of chocolate. So this one's been eaten a bit, but um, uh, this is your Euphoria mm -hmm. chocolate. Oh God, Zoom, you need to upgrade your... <laughs> Um, oh, the love creatures. drops. Okay, so, and I'm doing my best to show. There we go. Ta da. Oh, yeah. So, nice. I want to ask you first, let me pull back and say, I want to talk about microdosing. Mm -hmm. What is microdosing per you, and how is it relevant? What are the advantages? Let's start. Okay, with. I love this question. Um, so, we'll start with the fact that humans are energy. You're just made up of energy. You might think you're solid, but you're not. And your brain, your brain has newer networks in it. So when you have something like anxiety or depression or insomnia or something that you're not super into living with, 
that means that the neural networks in your brain, they've been so grooved in with thoughts that actually don't serve your emotional body. And what microdosing does when it comes into your system is that it upgrades your new your neuro network pathways so that new ones form and the new ones that form are actually of a higher vibrational capacity so you can have new thoughts that are more joyful your thoughts create the emotions you feel so if you feel down in the dumps there's a repetitive thought going on that's pumping that emotion into your system and when you start learning about your subconscious mind and how you're thinking, you're able to direct how you feel in your body, which is a very empowering experience. But, or I should say, and some of us need a little bit of assistance to get to that level. And this medicine is for that upgrade. It's for like new neural pathways, feelings of love emanating from you naturally. Uh, we're not here to feel pain and suffering, by the way. That's an agenda that was pushed upon us. So we're here to feel bliss, joy, euphoria, love all the time. That's what the 5D entrance is all about. This medicine is really a 5D facilitator of having a higher vibrational experience in your everyday life. Um, I've taken them. I've been on them for almost a year. I used to have very edgy PMS experiences where like I'd have to self-isolate so I wouldn't be mean to people. And I am genuinely in love now all the time it doesn't matter if my moon is coming or not i don't go into that dragon edge phase where like i'm just super irritable so for me i got to upgrade that and what i'm finding because we're vibrational beings when i encapsulate these capsules i'm doing prayer and I'm also have a certain um, Hertz vibrational wavelength playing while we're capsulating. So what that means is you're not just getting your physical systems upgrading. I'm adding a vibrational upgrade to your spiritual bodies. And that is very, very, very strongly felt. Um, there's a woman who had a heart palpitation and a weak valve. And she, they were telling her we should do surgery because you can't live with constant heart palpitations. It's not good for you. Plus it didn't feel good to her to always feel like she was having like a panic vibe in her heart. And I said, I don't know why, but I think this is going to work for you. She took the micros. She's been on, um, I don't know, maybe like nine, 10 weeks now, not one heart palpitation. She's and which has she used? Was it only the chocolate? It was the micro, it was the love drops. It was the, oh, the love drops. Interesting. So she takes one problem. capsule a day, okay. has an experience to help palpitation since. Wow. Yeah. You think that's because of the kava kava in this or the, what? well, I mean, there's a lot, there's lion's mane. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot. I think it's the, I think it's the alchemical everything. I think mm -hmm. it's how everything is working together as one. And that's why I put all these other ingredients in there because they all have different jobs in the process. Okay, so I, I do want to read that list. I it was not easy to see this, but I did write them <laughs> all down. The love drops contain lion's mane, turkey tail, cacao, reishi, makuna, purians, vanilla bean, boswellia, cayenne, and one tenth, tenth gram of psilocybin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And kava kava, right? No kava kava. Kava kava was in the tranquility tincture that we talked about last time. Ah, kapi. And it's my favorite herb. So it probably got stuck in your. Oops. A little bit <laughs> out there. Yum. Man, so can I just tell you? Mm -hmm. So I indulged on Sunday for a really long walk with the dogs. And first, I, I, I don't know. Let me see if I could show, like, I think if I had that much. Yeah. Oh, it's strong. <laughs> oh, woman. Yeah. And one of these, you know, woo. Yeah. So I, I had me quite a journey. <laughs> um, that was no joke without a doubt. Yeah. That was really powerful. And yeah. it lasted I, what I loved about it is how it informed what I was going to do next. What I mean is it allowed me to slow down enough. I fire really fast all the time. Right. And so it means I can accomplish a lot. I mean, there's a lot of inherently good things in that, 
but sometimes really understanding what the self-care would prefer in the next moment is not as easy. What this allowed me to do, this um, amalgam of the love drops, as well as using the euphoria at once, is, you know, I came home from the walk and what did I want to do next? Oh, I want to put on high vibe music. I want to yeah. dance around. And then I would sit on the sofa and shout out, you know, three at least things I was grateful for. <laughs> and then I just sat there on the sofa listening to the music to feel as happy as I could for no reason. <laughs> and then when that was done, I was like, okay, what's next? Hot bath. God, oh, oh this all God. sounds so good. Oh, so wow. I soaked for a while. And then that was done. And I was like, oh, I have to lay down. And then I'm laying down with puppies, which is about the best. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, frankly, that's when I started Hamilton. And there was a part of me th- saying, dude, like, you <laughs> right? know, this is a lot of information in Hamilton, a lot to follow. But there was something so incredibly open in me, like, oh, I don't know, it became this incredible extravaganza. I just, I was riveted. Yeah. So yeah. it was like, you know, and then I made love with my partner and it was awesome. Wow. It was like, oh. Sunday. <laughs> that's like uh, everyone's Sunday should be. That's incredible. <laughs> it was a full spectrum Sunday, right? <laughs> so thank you so much for this. Yeah. So all of that is possible to you and more because who knows what your <laughs> self-care would be people out there. But what could you talk about? So I love that you said somebody was able to, you know, heal something pretty significant physically. If we do these independently, can you talk about what's possible in microdosing? Yeah. So microdosing with the love drops, I would say anything from insomnia, anxiety, depression, Mm -hmm. it's so good for chronic pain because a lot of times chronic pain is a repetitive thought. Am I going to have the pain? And then you have the pain. But if you give yourself a mental reset, you actually have a different felt experience. So I've seen a lot of people taking it for chronic pain. Um, people that have experienced great loss this year, they're not depressed. But I mean, let's be real. This is, a, this is an intense time, 2020 mm-hmm. to 2021. It's a thick time. So just to have a lightning little helper with you, that's what it's for. PMS regulation, hormone regulation. Um, And when I say regulation, balance, coming back into homeostasis, like what you said, um, it's, it's a divinely guided medicine. Psilocybin, if you read my book, it's, it's living, it's a living medicine. So when it enters into your field, it can homeostasis you for what you need. So like for you, Debbie, let's say you fire fast. And when you take it, you feel more neutral and chill and you're in love. And it's, it's more of like a balanced state, but maybe for someone that's in a more relaxed state and doesn't have that fire, it'll give them that fire. Mm. So it's not an across the board. I can just tell you, but I can tell you that it's innately intelligent, that it'll go into your systems and it'll give you homeostasis specifically for you. So that's the love drop portion um, the euphoria, it's a full gram of psilocybin and chocolate. That one I made <laughs> I, to go with the book because the book tells you how to have a sacred deep dive with yourself in a safe way. And if you eat that whole chocolate and you follow the guidelines that I line out in the book, which is safe container, water, you need to have a counselor or an integration therapist, doesn't have to be like someone who has that certification, but someone with a high vibe that can counsel you that's on call if you need that. So you feel supported. And then to have an integration experience afterwards, um, you can get a lot of insight. Maybe you're at a crossroads in your life and you're like, I don't know what to do. I'm spinning out. Go deep dive. Go get some higher insight. Yeah. During one of the things that came about uh, from doing medicine during this interesting time, I, I got in touch with, you know, where did music go in my life? I mean, I'd been doing music since I was a little kid. I used to be a professional singer and actress. And then 13 years ago when I started radio, you know, I, I made new choices, zero regrets, love what I do. <laughs> and it came up for me, you know, on San Pedro. Mm-hmm. And then my boyfriend started playing guitar again. And I started singing again and we started doing medicine songs and ceremony songs. 
invited to perform at ceremonies and in return, we were gifted the medicine. And I will tell you that, you know, like the shaman just being concerned, like how is Debbie gonna get up and sing for an hour? <laughs> All the participants while she's on medicine, very mm -hmm. smart concern, they only gave me half a cup. Mm -hmm. But you know, much like what you're saying with the microdosing, I gotta say, I had a full blown experience and healing. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Like nothing was denied to me just by drinking <laughs> half a cup. So uh, this is like really possible. And, and I love the idea that so little can go so far. And I completely concur that it creates um, a life force within you. But I like the idea of a vine yes. living inside of you, that it is there for you when you need to call on it. And it's ever present. I love that you're singing during ceremony. I would love to go to one of those. Ceremonies. I know. I would love, love, love for you to be there. Maybe we'll have to do something about that. Yeah. <laughs> so I also would like to just show people, you know, because you take so much care with your products, which as a luxe kind of person, and I don't mean money, I mean, I love beautiful things. I love care. And, you know, you just imbue everything with care. Um, you get all these gorgeous cards and instructions. Uh, there's there's so much available when you order through White Fox Medicinals, and it comes in these awesome. Is this pouch hemp? Yeah, of course. <laughs> and so you know, it just comes like it's a love package. It's a it is package. a love package. Yeah, yeah. We actually went through an interesting experience yesterday. Um, we are my website got canceled by paypal so they sent me an email and said you are banned from ever using this payment portal both professionally and personally and you cannot dispute this charge and they said it was on the basis of selling narcotics now my website has been up and running for 10 years selling organic herbal remedies i obviously don't sell narcotics and I was super angry at first, but then I was like, this is an opportunity because I don't like Shopify. I don't like the people who own Shopify. And I also don't like the people who own PayPal. And I've never wanted to give them part of my revenue because I don't stand for their agendas. So it's an opportunity to free myself from them. But currently, if people go to the website, they have to email me directly. or And I put my cell phone number on there and I put my email just send me what you want and I'll send you a square link to pay and we'll be all good. Um, but we, we are shut down for about two weeks for people to just direct. I am building an entirely new website right now. So that's something for people to be aware of like small medicinal companies. We really are under constant attack by these larger facilitators because they've made up their own rules and they can do what they want with us. So it's an interesting time it makes me feel like a stronger fighter and it makes me feel like what I'm doing is having an impact to take money out of big pharma's pockets. And if they're that threatened by a company size like mine, that means we're making a substantial impact. So that fills my heart with so much winged joy. I'm just like, we must be really upsetting them if they're attacking somebody the size of me, you know? But yeah, so we're in a rebuild process right now. Yeah. Okay. That's crazy. Um, I've heard this about other really huge venues, some of which I'm on and from really well-known people. So mm -hmm. interesting. Um, and I'm sorry that happened, but yes, there'll be a magic, magical ending for this. It'll definitely be more suitable for you and for your people. But that begs me to ask, you recently became trademarked. I mean, yes. this is huge. Like I honestly yeah. followed the news on this yeah. <laughs> for you. And, and tell me about that. How did you get psilocybin trademarked? That's a big deal. It's huge, Debbie. And I, I, I never thought it was possible and it wasn't my idea. It was the spirit of psilocybin's idea. And when that vision came to me, I was laughing at them. Like, you can't trademark that word. I, you guys are in spirit form. I'm in the actual universe. Like, you can't trademark that word. But visions, I can't turn my back on visions no matter what my personal opinion is. So I told my lawyer, my lawyer is a badass. Can I say his name? Yeah, totally. Luke Zimmerman 
is a mystical lawyer badass who totally gets me in all of my weird visions. And I'll straight out tell him what happened and what I'm seeing. And he's like, okay, Scarlett, it's your money. I have to advise you. This is crazy because I'm also, you know, I got to be real with you. He's like, you're not going to get it. This is crazy. And I was like, well, here's a huge chunk of cash. Please try. So he did. And then six, six months in, he's like, I really think we got to change the wording. Like maybe P S I L L Y. And then like Sybin and just like, he's like, you'll totally get it if we do that. And I was like, no, it has to be the word or I don't even want it. And then it was about a year into the process. And he called me and he's like, you're not going to fucking believe it. <laughs> you got it. He's like, you got it. And then the media and the news called me and they came to my house. A news station came to my house and interviewed me in my living room. Um, of course, a slander article was written about me that I'm a massive corporation with right. billions of dollars here to rape the native medicine community. That's what they published. I was like, are you kidding? Like, did you even Google my name? Like massive corporation. I'm a small woman owned company. And the whole point, honestly, is, um, is to have psilocybin stay in a spiritual realm connected to deep Gaia roots and connected to source mm -hmm. and to have it be more of an educational thing than something somebody can monetize and sell and put into chemical compounds and turn it into white powder and push it out for high amounts of money. Uh, I'm going to preserve the word for spiritual evolutionary purposes. I'm not making any money off the word, not a dime, you know, like maybe subsequently through my books, it gives my books a little bit more of leverage. I'm not sure, mm -hmm. but um, I'm not putting it on anything and selling it. And I'm not displaying that I have it, but I educate on psilocybin for spiritual advancement. And that's how this is going to stay and be maintained. Mm. God, I really relate to this. And I love that it is so spiritual for you. I, I get it. I just get it. I had the most um, beautiful conversation last night with my boyfriend, my partner who I live with. And, and um, we were talking about musicals and I was saying, you know, that was my whole life. It's so interesting to be so intimately connected with someone who doesn't know a whole chunk of your life, never saw you on stage performing in that way. And he was asking me about the music I sang. So for me, it was all Broadway stuff, all musical stuff. Then later on, when I did get into radio and I was trying to navigate both worlds, it became big band, which was difficult for me, that era wow. singing, but I got paid well, so I did it. Then that got parlayed into jazz and I was like on fire. I was like, <laughs> I didn't know this thing existed. I wish I'd been trained so I could have scat and done other things like that. I loved jazz. I loved blue blues and all of that. And then I made the hard choice to let it go. So here I am today singing medicine songs and healing songs. And he was saying, well, how is that for you? And I said, it is like singing the songs of God. That's oh, what it wow. feels like to me yeah. that I feel because the reference point for me is Aya and Gaia. Yeah. And that to me is divine. It's complete divinity to help heal, steer, inform, expand. I, I can't even say enough and there aren't enough words. And so the songs feel like that to me. Yeah. And so in that spirit, I would love to ask you about how you engage with it. It, whatever you do, if you don't mind saying psilocybin, ibogaine, iboga, ayahuasca, peyote, any, all. Yeah. I just want to say that like when you started speaking of singing, the amount of source that comes out of your heart, like I can just picture you on stage fully illuminated in, in, in your source body. Just meeting like you're embodying God or goddess at that time and there's nothing else existing. Mm -hmm. that's how easy it is for us to become enlightened in any given moment. If we fully embody our authenticity and we allow creativity to flow through us, we're there. It's that's it. We're in that state. So I just totally saw you in that state and it's so inspiring. Mm -hmm. Thank you thank for sharing you. that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, and just like a funny aside, I was recently interviewed 
on, on a really well-known podcast. And it happens to be the, the podcast host is somebody I went to USC with where I majored in dramatic arts. And I was telling him just like, I'm, you know, I'm singing again. It's crazy. And he's like, <laughs> you're really lucky you have a voice after 13 years. And I'm like, I know, like to get out of the way and allow this to come through me after 13 years, it's a muscle. It's like working out and suddenly going out and doing a marathon. It's like, oh, there's so much capacity there. So mm -hmm. thank you, you know, divine for coming through me and for you seeing the source. So yes, back to the question, how do you engage with these elements? Do you do them? How do they uh, come for you? Is there something you love in particular? Yes. So um, for me, when I see a plant, like in the 3D world, I see the spirit of that plant too, which is in the unseen world. And I see it in my vision center and they communicate to me through pictures and vibrations and knowings. I'll just have a knowing of what they're trying to convey. So when I'm interacting with plant medicine, before it even enters my vessel, I'm having a spiritual experience with it because I'm playing in the world of the unseen, which to me is the world of God or goddess. And it's the intrinsic little light lines that connect all of us as one heartbeat. So I feel like I'm entering into like that heartbeat when I'm visioning in that world. And I would say on a regular basis, I ingest plant medicine and that's kind of to keep my foundation high vibe. And that's just where I'm at right now. I might not be in that space. I might be totally dry next year. I don't know, but this is where I'm at right now. But my, my most favorite inspired is kind of what you said when I get out of the way. And what happens when I get out of the way is this actually happened last night. So I like to smoke cannabis before I go to bed. And a girlfriend of mine taught me this. She had this epic idea. She was like, put your joint in your sound bowl, do a sound bowl ceremony and then smoke it. And so I was like, okay, I actually want to have a date with Jesus tonight. That was my plan for last night. And I want to commune with his energy. I want to be surrounded by divine masculine. I want to feel what it feels like to be with an enlightened male in my presence. So I rolled a joint. I put it in my sound bowl and I had like a 15 minute sound bowl ceremony. I was envisioning um, Christ consciousness coming into the joint and I was envisioning a white egg kind of around me encapsulating the whole experience. And then I stepped outside and I smoked and I went and I laid on my bed and I felt the moment where I could either think through what was happening or I could get out of the way and let it move through me. And I made a conscious choice to get out of the way and what started moving through me was these waves of light that had particles of Christ consciousness in it. And what was interesting was initially my, my idea was maybe he'd appear in spirit form and we'd have a communication or something. But what he did was show me how he's already inside of me. And the waves of light that went through me, I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it because it was really a trippy thing. But he illuminated me to like, don't look outside yourself for fulfillment. Whatever you want to feel, whatever you want to experience, Scarlett, it's in you. And I was feeling the waves of light move through my systems and the particles that were carrying Christ consciousness were like pop rocks kind of popping through my body. And I laid there maybe an hour just like grinning, right? Like, oh, uh. and that was my experience last night. So those, those types of things where like, I don't know what's going to come through, but I'll have an idea. I'll create sacred space for the idea and I'll kind of move into whatever is going to occur. Yeah. I like so much the, uh, that you take something, uh, this is such a wrong word, but in a sense, it's pedestrian. Everybody's doing it the same way in a certain way. And that you receive an inspiration, whether it's through somebody with an idea or you just widen back enough for it to come through you. And that you then go with it, you experiment with it, and you have a very unique experience, like last night with Jesus and the Pop Rocks. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, it would be a great title for a book. <laughs> Let's do it. And I just want to be full disclosure. I still feel a barrier of fear right before I get out of the way, because that's I can so feel the immense amount of power that's about to come into my experience. <sighs> And there'll be a part of my humanness that's like, am I going through a tiny death? What's about to happen? I don't know. So the unknown will create this vibrational wall of fear. And once I recognize that, I say, 
I see you, I honor you, but I'm still going to go this route. Girl. Yeah. Your transparency. It's so important. You know what? Me too. Yeah. Me too. I mean, yeah. it doesn't matter how many times I've drunk, taken. Well, there are certain things it doesn't come up. It's sort of yeah. like, you know, I'm diving. <laughs> but I feel it too. And I will tell you that two weeks ago, I had a shaman, a shaman I've drunk with before. And he has been doing this for, I don't know how many decades, very well known out there. And God bless that he came on. He's drunk thousands of times. Wow. And he had the chutzpah to say, I am scared every time before. Yeah. And I said, why? And he said, Debbie, it's my consciousness. And that yeah. always comes up. Now, I think you and I might agree. You'll have to weigh in because I have the fear. And then once I'm there, frankly, I can't imagine anything more beautiful, even when it's stuff it brings up to heal and look at. Yeah. I feel so incredibly loved and held. Yeah. It's not like an earthly, regular real-time pain. It's right. so different. It's a complete divine release. Yes. You concur? So I a hundred percent concur. And the most, like I had an ayahuasca journey that was, I, they dismantled me. She totally dismantled my whole system. I laid there in so much pain with a fever covered in sweat needing to purge, but she wouldn't let me purge. So my stomach was just being pound. It felt like it was just being pummeled. And I, during the experience, it's what you said. I, I made a conscious decision to surrender and it was the fear that was actually generating the pain that was, uh, in line with resistance. But as soon as I noticed consciously, oh, I'm not actually in pain. I'm just resisting an experience here. And I made a decision to surrender. The experience transformed into more of a soul massage instead of a dismantling feeling. So I think it's it's just really wise to always realize how human we are. And as long as we're in human form, we're humans. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter how enlightened you are. Jesus still felt pain on the cross. You know, he's not exempt. No one's exempt while you're in human form. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Even in the beginning of your book, psilocybin transmissions, we're with you as you have made this choice. Okay. Well, I'm going to take psilocybin magic mushrooms and I'm going to see, you know, what is there? What is the connection? What does it have to say to me? And I'm going to actually journal what comes out, but you're having this trepidation in the beginning before, of course, this amazing journey begins. Yeah. Yeah. And every chapter was a different lesson for me. So before I could write that chapter, I was actually put through the experience of learning that lesson. The book was written in about three weeks and it, the whole thing was like a trip and it was painful beyond measure. Like my life was the opposite of bliss during those three weeks, even mm -hmm. though it was extremely enlightening and the insight I was getting was expanding my consciousness. My human experience felt like I was walking through the depths of hell and it gave me such a devotion to the depths of hell, which can sound weird to people. But if, if we don't have the strength to walk through that darkness, we can't get to the illumination. And I think that avoiding the darkness creates a resistance inside of yourself that rejects a part of yourself. So I want to really just open arm, allow each experience to have equal praise. The joy and the bliss gets just as much equal plays as the edgy and the dismantled angry part of Scarlet. I love all Scarlet's parts. <laughs> How much did you take in order to have that deep of an experience plus the transmissions? Um, I ate that euphoria square. So I was making those for myself and I'm so- <laughs> Woman, <laughs> yeah. really? The I'm whole so, thing? The whole thing. And you're so tiny blasted for like 10 hours, Oof. like totally incapacitated. But I, I'm at this place now where I come into contact with medicine. Like someone was, she had gotten a batch of ayahuasca and they were preparing the ceremony and I wasn't going to participate in the ceremony, but I was around them curating the medicine for the evening. And I was bringing some CBD for when people came down I, and I wasn't going to stay. But when I got into the ceremony space, I started having an ayahuasca experience. Yeah. 
And I was just like, I couldn't stand. And I sat down, I was rocking. And she's like, oh shit, like you're going into it. And I was like, what the fuck, man? Like, I actually have an appointment in two hours. <laughs> and so she, she, I dropped everything. She actually grabbed my, like held me and walked me out of the space. And when I got a certain distance, it started, the, this experience started dying off. Mm. But like, I- That's interesting. I can't seem to go into a space, whether I ingest it or not, I'm there. Mm -hmm. and that's been my new reality and it's it's it started long ago I would go to bars um about three or four years ago when this started happening the sensitivity people would be on cocaine and if I got too close to them I would start tasting cocaine in my mouth and I would be like oh like I gotta get out of here I don't want to be meshing with this vibration and I don't have a I don't know if I can stop it you know, like I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a conscious awareness of how to pick and choose at this point in, in my growth. So I just kind of remove myself from situations where people are doing certain things that I don't feel like doing at that time. That's amazing. I have this superpower <laughs> as well. I've never heard anybody say it and I've never said it out loud. It's like Claire psychoactive. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Yes. If people are on ecstasy and I get around them, I'm rolling my face off. <laughs> it is insane. It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> I've had it, you know, with Rob, like over a year ago, before we lived together, um, he would take, I'm trying to remember. Oh, I don't even remember, but you know, let's say it was mushrooms and he would call me and within moments I was totally fucked up. I mean, <laughs> yeah. And he would like just applaud me and say, I don't know how you know how to talk to me and guide me while I'm on this stuff. I'm like, are you crazy? <laughs> I'm totally clean and sober and I'm on it too at the same time. Like I feel you. That yes. deeply. And maybe it is really about being so clairsentient that yes. even that and activated somehow that that can come through. Um, and, you know, so then I want to ask you, because I'm so curious about this, because you call yourself a star seed. Love, mm -hmm. have you actually had an ET encounter? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I work with them. I'm working on, with them right now on a project. I have a trademark application and it's going to blow your mind from these, <laughs> from these extra. Well, so I think the word extraterrestrial will bring up a vision of an alien in people's minds that has, it's not humanoid, but um, intergalactic beings look like humans. So like Palladians look like humans and different star clusters, like the beings on Mars, they look like humans and the beings in Jupiter look like humans. So I am working with extraterrestrials, but they look like humans and um there's a technology that they're showing me that I'm going to build and it's a specific chamber that people will be able to go into and it'll harness Christ consciousness. So you can lay in this chamber and allow Christ consciousness to fill your entire system. It's super trippy. I, they've put one, they've put a, um, a psychic one over me to, in my bed space. So the first time they came to me, it was in a dream and they said, we want you to build this technology. And I was like, obviously I'm down. This is rad. I was like, Christ consciousness. Are you serious? They're like, yeah. Do you want to experience it? And I was like, yeah. So uh, like um, in the, in the unseen world, they showed me what it looks like and they put it and they placed it over my bed and I laid there and I was levitating vibrationally. I didn't even feel like I was on my bed. I was just like, whoa, yeah. Christ consciousness is epic. So it has to do specifically with the, the ley lines, the light lines of the planet, and then star conjunctions above. So it needs to be specific to the location. It won't be like a chamber that's built and then wherever you move it, it's going to activate. It has to be built specifically in each location to align with whatever the earth ley lines are and whatever the star things are above. So I'm waiting to build a prototype um, until I get my house because I want it to be a permanent structure and I've, I've applied for the trademark for what they want me to call it and you keep your lawyer very busy don't you <laughs> and when I told him about this one I was like okay Luke these beings came to me and they want me to build this Christ consciousness chamber so and he's like okay he's like I love you as a client because I don't have any other clients like you 
yeah i'm in i i'm in love with him on a soul level i'm just like his spirit so sees me and so holds me and gosh who can say that about a lawyer yeah right oh my god right lawyer right client so uh this is the end of the show you know I'm crazy about you. You bring something so refreshing. And for me, this is the conversation. It really is where I'm excited and curious and alive. So thank you for being yes. you. And what would you like to say to the listeners, to the viewers here at the end? I have made so many beautiful contacts from our last podcast that people have reached out to me and say, I resonate with what you said so much. Can we just talk? I feel like you'll hear me. I feel like you'll see me. And I just want to say, please reach out to me. I'm here for you. We're a community. Debbie has created this ability for us to link up. And if you feel called to get in touch with me, I'm going to be here for you. So thank you, Debbie. And thank you for sharing more about your singing capacities because that brought a lot of joy to my tummy. And I just love picturing you as a songbird. Oh, nice. Well, we're going to be putting some of our songs up on YouTube for free because we want everybody, you don't have to even be in ceremony, you can feel it and be activated. Wow. And to follow the beautiful, amazing Scarlet Raven, go to her website, her name, scarletraven.com. It's R-A-V-I-N. And I end today's show with this quote from Scarlet Raven's website. I am here to anchor the light. I was chosen for this. I stand in the light of my soul's highest virtues. I radiate well-being to shift this planet. I declare there is nothing but divine perfection. I am willing to stand for the light in any circumstance. I ask the universe to work through me. I allow the light of the universe to work through me to bring to life my most fulfilling reality for the well being of all that I am now. And so it is. Subscribe to the show so you can hear this number one weekly transformation conversation. And oh my God, if you're into <laughs> ETs and what I am now calling the visitors. The amazing, the fucking amazing Whitley Strieber is back. It has probably been at least eight to nine years since he was on the show. The great American novelist who wrote the compelling bestseller Communion and many more. He's had TV specials about his visitors from other planets. He's won awards. He also hosts his own radio program called Dreamland, which was founded by Art Bell. Do not miss this. And by the way, I'm going there. I got me some big questions since the visitors and extraterrestrials and multidimensionals and parallel universes and more and even more. This is the subject du jour. So definitely join us next week. Please tell your friends and family all about this show. Take a screenshot of the episode on your phone and post it to your favorite social media platform. Tag me, Debbie Dashinger, and I will shout you out. Let them know that this is your favorite podcast and why I adore you all and make all your dreams into your reality. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs>